All right, so the first thing on stuff I find interesting this week is about computer keyboards or keyboards in general. And I know this is not a super sexy topic, but I found it very, very <laughs> interesting. So if, you look, if, if you're sitting in front of a keyboard right now and you look down at your keyboard, what you'll see on the top of the letters is something called QWERTY. So Q-W-E-R-T-Y, right? Yep. And that is kind of the shorthand for the keyboard configuration that we have across the world. And what I mean by that is where are the letters placed on a keyboard? Right? So if you think about a keyboard, you can put the letters anywhere you want, right? But there's been the standard that's been that's been built over the years because you, you want to be able to learn to type on one keyboard and then transfer that to another keyboard. Yeah. You don't have to relearn every single time. And so the QWERTY keyboard has kind of become the world standard. And so I was reading a bit about it and why it's become the world standard was Hawks all the way back to typewriters, which was way before our time, Chad. <laughs> but but typewriters back in the day were like the, the, the precursors to keyboards, obviously. Yeah. And why the QWERTY keyboard came into being was that these typewriters would jam often. So if you push the same key too often or keys very close to each other too often, it would jam the whole machine and the machine would stop working. You have to fix the machine and retype <laughs> what you had typed, right? So as typists and secretaries and whatnot got faster and faster and faster at typing, they jammed the keyboard more and more. So the keyboard manufacturers had to fight this, right? So what they did was they developed this QWERTY keyboard, which basically puts the kind of letters that are commonly used together as far apart as possible. And what that means is that it minimizes the amount of jams from these typewriters. So it made all the sense in the world, and at that time it slowed the typists down because it's a less efficient way of typing, right? The kind of way the keyboards are set out. So that's all very well and good, and that kind of makes sense. Then we move from typewriters to the computer generation, and all of a sudden we're using keyboards that don't jam, right? Keyboards that are absolutely fine. There's there's no issues with that. But we keep the same QWERTY layout just because of, I don't know if it's laziness or just kind of that's how we grew up and that's how we learned it. And so we are stuck with an inefficient use of the keyboard. And for today, like so much of typing is... I mean, typing is everywhere. Typing is super important around the world, and the speed of typing really dictates a lot of information transfer. And so the fact that we are using a very inefficient mode of our keyboard <laughs> simply because it's just how the way it was, that's the status quo, I found that fascinating. It's one of those examples of history that just repeats itself, and we haven't actually ad adjusted or adapted to the fact that we're not using typewriters anymore. That is absolutely fascinating. It's something I haven't thought about. I mean, we've spoken about keyboards actually a surprising amount of time on this podcast already. <laughs> um, I mean, I talk about, you know, the Apple MacBook and the, the butterfly keyboard, which which did jam. Um, but I completely get where <laughs> you're coming from, Barry. Um, we've also spoken about keyboards that are in the future going to project uh, something onto surfaces or even not project, but actually pick up movement um, using a camera. Um, and yeah, we haven't actually spoken about the, the basis upon which keyboards have been designed and I find this fascinating. Um, it's one of those where we really do need to stop and, and sort of ask the question, um, is it possible to, to change this? What is the period that we're going to have to live with a bit of change? Um, and, you know, for the, for the sake of civilization, should we just suck it up and do it? I mean, a lot of the times uh, we're typing now on screens, screens that would be able to dynamically change. Um, and uh, yeah, I certainly, I certainly think if there is another more efficient manner, we should surely be doing that. Um, I never thought QWERTY was particularly slow. Um, are you at that kind of lightning fast speeds that uh, you find QWERTY slows you down? <laughs> I'm definitely not, but but maybe it could be faster, right? So, so Chad, I'm very happy to tell you I've got the answer to your problem. <laughs> there is a more efficient keyboard layout. Amazing. Um, because, we can, because we can do computer simulations on these things, the, the super nerds have developed a new layout, and they call it the Dvorak. So it's D-V-O-R-A-K. That's kind wow. of the shorthand. And um, for a lot of computer scientists and people who code a lot, they like the Dvorak method, and they kind of re-engineer their keyboards. So they'll take the keys off and re-engineer re <laughs> them to wow. be in this new layout, and that apparently gives them some sort of advantage when it comes to speed. So okay. it's not even about, like, it's, it's, it's simply just making it more efficient for your hands to travel across the keyboard. You're still going to be slow if you're slow, right? It doesn't make you automatically <laughs> faster, but it gives you a better chance of getting faster, and it gives you a better chance of being more efficient and making less mistakes, because th the letter are, are laid out in a way that matches the English language and how we use the English language. So for all the super nerds out there, the Dvorak uh, keyboard configuration is out there. Um, and the question of whether it's ever going to become mainstream, I don't know. It's going to take a huge amount of like friction yeah. to get over that change. Um, and to change the keyboard layouts across the world is, is a monumental task. But it seems, for me, it seems important because like 
it's the primary means of, of inputting and, and getting information, right? Definitely. And so why wouldn't we want to make it as efficient as possible? Why are we sticking to this old system for, for no reason other than history? Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Um, we'll have to soon see. I mean, like you said, currently people are you know buying third party configured type keyboards to, to get around this. And maybe that's not a bad way for us to edge in the right direction. Um, like we've seen with things in the past, if we put enough pressure on manufacturers, um, ultimately we drive the need. Um, so I think it's really about getting that messaging out there, um, getting a couple of sort of demos out there. Um, and yeah, certainly there's going to be a lot of mental work for us to make that shift. Not going to be quite easy, um, but I think we can do it. So uh, we probably should. Oh. Across the pond